tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Satnam, everyone. My name is Reverend Rich, and I'm here again for another episode of Practical Magic, where we talk about things that are relevant in our daily lives and what are tools available to us in science and spirituality, which we can utilize to make our lives easier despite the challenges that we are faced with today. And today, I want us to focus on coherence, especially we have our guest, Dr. Kathleen Riley, who has extensive environment. Uh, but before we talk more about it, how's the weather today in LA? You know, actually, I'm in Northern California, but it mm -hmm. is it is happily cold. <laughs> we are we. I am in a very hot pocket of California, mm -hmm. and up, gosh, even two weeks ago, we were still uh, touching into the 90s. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when we're having these days in the mid 50s and 60s, it's quite delightful. And we do have mountains around us. So the, um, the evenings are, you know, they're in the 30s. Um, we've had a little bit of rain finally. We've, we've been awesome. so dry since April. So wow. the first rain to fall was two days ago. And we here do a happy dance when we get rain. Awesome. Unlike other parts of the world <laughs> that do the happy dance when there's sun. Yeah, that's fantastic because, you know, recently we had an abundance of rain and wind uh, winds yes. blowing in our direction. So it was something that we didn't expect. So if it was more balanced and harmonious, we could have actually distributed energetically some of it in your area. So that would have <laughs> balanced the whole thing. Anyway, winds and one thing that's very interesting about you is that you have this specialization on the piano and at the same time you have three certifications in heart math so was this something that you were always passionate about growing up about studying the piano and at the same time learning about the heart well i i began piano i think piano's just been inside of me forever i think i just grew up kind of having this yearning for music and we had a piano in the house mm -hmm. and when I was in my about three and a half four years old I remember going over to the piano and just touching the keys and being curious and my mom played and she noticed and she just very gently started teaching me and my aunt who would come to visit would also sit with me on a Sunday and so by the age of seven I always already reading, playing, memorizing music. But the beauty of it was it was taught with love. Wow. And I don't remember like a, you know, there was no strict, oh, you have to do this, that, you know, in a teacherly way, it was, it was loving. Yeah. And then I did go for formal instructions. And I fast forward to senior year high school and I was a very good student. Wow. And what I imagined going off to school I said, well, I, I can't go away without piano. So yeah. at that point, I decided I would major in music and you know, still wanted to learn more, you know. Um, I know for a great deal of my life, probably actually since high school and college, I've known there's a deeper purpose for music yeah. and that there was a way that this was basically a first language that we all communicate through, but it wasn't until I got older, that I began to have the, the wording and the, the, the way to describe this. Yeah. And even though my degree in a doctorate was in piano performance, I really didn't seek that pathway to become this virtuoso, virtuosic pianist on stage. Mm. I chose that path to delve deeper into helping people understand what they're hearing, what they can create, and how they do it. So That's it's been fantastic. A, a journey, yeah. The thing about what you mentioned is that your family has always been very supportive of you. And you mentioned earlier that they're not doing it in a teacherly kind of way. So I, I would 
uh, assume that your family was very open and receptive to the curiosity that you had as a child growing up. So were both your parents uh, like that with you? Yes, my father was um, interesting. In college, he was very musical. And he yeah. was, um, I think he he was in the band and the, the glee club and just very, very artistic. And he graduated from Manhattan College. Yeah. And I think he had like a degree in history or humanities, but he ended up working for the NBC television studios in the very mm -hmm. beginnings of television. And he became one of their top lighting engineers. And so, you know, I was joking with you and the, and the, yeah. the other night, I'm like, oh, don't worry about my, my lights, they're good. You know, my father talks to me in my ear like, uh, honey, that's not looking so good, you know? So I, I kind of get the, the, the downloads that say, you know, look look at light. Since I was a tiny child, I remember just being taught to look up, really being taught about light, taught about the coloring. Yeah. And, um, and my father was very, very creative. My mother did play, but then she was also a teacher. My grandmother, who I did not know, was a teacher. So there's kind of a genetic lineage of heart, music, teaching that's come through both sides of my parents. Yeah. And uh, my, my dad's one aunt actually was a performer, um, dancer in theater. So it's, it's just been a part of the fabric Yeah. of who I am. And then, of course, I always had this other part of my brain that was very curious. Yeah. And that got really triggered when I finished my doctorate. And I said, oh, but there's all these musicians who are getting all these performance injuries. And there's all these musicians who are dealing with so much stress and anxiety. There's something off balance here. And that yeah. was the pathway back mm -hmm. in 2001 that led me down this path of seeking to know more about the body, both mm -hmm. from the mind and the physical, and into the whole realm of biofeedback, which mm -hmm. then through bringing heart math in, of course, put the two together, you know, and I began showing and teaching this to musicians. Well, if you're going to have a worry and a thought about the fingering or the music you're about to play, your muscles are going to have an immediate bracing or kind of lock up. Mm -hmm. If, on the other hand, and we all have experienced this, you kind of strain a finger or a wrist or you sprain an ankle, mm -hmm. and you have a little limp, you have a little teeny tiny accompanying, uh-oh, Oh, that doesn't feel so right. And so it creates anxiety. Yeah. So we have to go in the mind body loop, the heart. Yeah. For me, it's the doorway, the key, because it's our largest electromagnetic field in our body. And the heart will express your thoughts and your intentions, which is why that power of intention is so, so powerful. You know, somebody could be saying, oh, I, I'm fine, I'm good. And if there's a teeny tiny worry or feeling of fear, and my Lord, we've been through so much this year with the pandemic, yeah. with the political unrest, social unrest around the world, yes. that we're bombarded with fear. And so, We must take these times to go, like you started today so beautifully, with the breath. Focus on the breath. Focus on the area of your heart. Yes. Listen to the sound of your breath, even if you just begin with that. Yes. Yeah. And then take a few moments. Call to mind. One yeah. thing. One. You're appreciative of. You're thankful for. Start from that place. You focus yeah. on it. And it quiets the the chatter brain. Yeah. And when we really quiet, yeah. We quiet that chatter brain. We can actually listen to our higher brain. 
to our higher selves, our higher heart space, which does connect to the global field. Everything yeah. is frequency. Everything is intentionally created. Einstein said this. Control of the situation so that you can be more coherent about whatever is taking place in your life at the moment. Well, we it's it's very important to be cognizant and, and mindful of what are we trying to control and if it's too much from our ego, mm -hmm. we're going to impede where we're to be going. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I have a few years on you. So <laughs> I've been at this for a long time. Yeah. We all go through different stages in our lives. And a dear friend of mine said many years ago, something that I hold in my heart as a mantra. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, everything in life has an appointment and it's mm -hmm. always on time. Yes. Fantastic. And when something doesn't happen mm -hmm. or come when I think it should, I take a deep breath and acknowledge it wasn't my appointment. All thinking about this matter. Oh, yes, we all have to dig deep mm -hmm. um, in acknowledging things. Yes. And understanding, journaling is very important. I encourage everybody to write mm -hmm. the journal and even have a conversation yes. with a part of yourself. Yes. Have a conversation as you, I'll just give examples, mm -hmm. with your resistance to something mm -hmm. or yeah. with, with whatever it is. Just have, what's up? Why, why, what, what, why are you so resistant or something? And just do it in a journaling way and, and, it's interesting when you take that kind of approach mm -hmm. and you just let the pen go to paper, yeah. then read it, yes. and then read it aloud. That's amazing, read it aloud. Aloud. It is powerful mm -hmm. to give yourself those moments of breath, mm -hmm. conscious breath, Breath work, I've worked with a couple of people who do breath work with mm -hmm. lying on the floor, really feeling it. And allow yourselves, if there's an em emotions that come up, allow them to come up. Mm -hmm. But allow them to clear. And we humans have a sometimes a tendency mm -hmm. to want to keep playing the same tape. Yeah. <laughs> we say, um. play the same tape, play <laughs> it over again, Sam, over here, you know? And, and we don't yeah. want to do that because mm -hmm. that mind loop will put a detour or roadblock to our moving forward and clearing it. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on V81 Radio, Manila.